Hey, welcome in. In this video, uh, we'll be doing our second look into simulating branching processes. Check out the first video uh, if you kind of want an introductory. We're going to be using similar code, but a little bit more sophisticated in this video. Um, again, there are packages where you can do all sorts of branching processes stuff, but I think it's useful to uh, kind of go from the ground up. Um, so in this video, we're going to use, uh, last time we talked about how if you have a not very aggressive offspring distribution with an expected offspring of less than one, you're going to die, the population will die out with probability one. So we kind of want the more interesting cases where, um, oh, I have to define my offspring, um, uh, where, you know, we have zero to four offspring, here are the probabilities of each offspring, 35%, zero offspring, 35%, one offspring, 10%, two offspring, et cetera. Um, and we have, ooh, I did not want to do that. Sorry, I hit the source button accidentally. Um, and we have uh, an average offspring of 1.2. So this is an interesting process because it won't necessarily um, go extinct. We saw in the last video, you can estimate the extinction probability. It's going to go extinct about 75% of the time, uh, but 25% of the time it will blow up um, kind of uh, to infinity. So um, we're going to establish the same way, kind of our good simulation stuff, um, setting the seed, number of simulations. Um, and again, we're going to have uh, data where we keep track of the trial, if it goes extinct or not, the uh, number of generations in the cell, the number of cells in the nth or in the final generation. Um, but this time, we want to actually look at the path of the branching processes. So we're going to establish a matrix, um, and we're going to fill it with zeros to start. Um, the number of rows is going to be number of generations, which, which we set at 30. That's going to be our maximum generations before we cut off um, the simulation. And in terms of columns, it's, it's just going to be the number of trials that we have. So this is a big matrix. It's 30 by 1,000. You can't really see it well here. Um, and we're going to start the first row. We're going to say the first row, which is kind of technically the zero with generation, we're starting with one cell. Um, so that's what, that's what that's doing. Like if I look at um, head data path one through five, one through 10, you're going to see like each column is a different trial. Each row is a different time step or generation. The first or zero generation starts with, with one cell. Um, so let's get into our loop, which is similar to what we did before. Um, we're going to loop n sims times. We're going to start each time with a population of one. Um, but we're actually, instead of a, a while loop, which we did last time, we kind of looped until extinction. We're going to loop until um, we hit 30 generations. So we have a separate for loop. No, we have a different index. Otherwise, things would get messy. We have J instead of I. We're going to go from uh, two to 30 generations. We have the same kind of uh, mechanic. We're uh, sampling our population from the offspring, uh, sample the number of times for however many cells we have in the population. We use our probability according to P, and we have to make sure that we sample with replacement. So replace equals true. Otherwise, <clears throat> you know, if you have 10 population, 10 cells in the population, you can't sample from a vector uh, that, that, that's smaller. So that's why we have that. And then the, the twist is that we're going to store the, uh, the population um, in whatever path we're in. So in the jth row, which means like the jth time step. So maybe the third time step here and the ith columns, so maybe on the first, you know, if i equals one, the first trial, that would be, that would be this number. And we're going to store the population that we get. And this is going to run until j equals 30, and then it will stop, unlike the while loop. However, if the population is zero, we are done. So we're just going to set, um, and we're just going to say population is zero. We have our same break condition. And we don't have to worry about filling in any, anything more in, in this data path object because everything is zero to begin with. Um, so let's do it. We're going to run it. Um, this is going to take a little bit longer to run because, you know, as you'd expect, everything is running. Oh, no, finished. But everything is running to 30 generations. Um, and we can inspect our uh, kind of results. So this is pretty cool. We have, um, you know, each column is, is a different run. Each row is a different time step. Again, each step starts with one generation and let's let's kind of look at each one so the first the first trial oh let's let's look at the fourth trial um the first offspring had four children which is a great start in terms of like how you know the, the population wants to survive but then in the third time step none of these four cells had an offspring and it immediately went extinct it went to zero and then once it, it was, it's extinct it stays extinct whereas in the eighth trial the first uh cell was like very prodigious it had four offspring and then those four had six those six had six more, um, you know, average of one each, and then the population doubled to 12. And now at this point, you can be fairly confident that, you know, 12 is, we'll see like how to actually accurately judge these probabilities in a second, but 
you know, you can expect if they get to 12, they're, they're probably going to survive for, for the long run. But instead of just look, you know, this is good to look and see how the simulation worked. Let's actually try to um, look at some, some empirical results. Um, so we're going to create some data plot object that we can actually visualize. Um, I'm just going to, this is essentially binding data path and the number of generations. So it's the same thing as this data path object, but with the, our first column for the number of generations. And then I wanna melt around those generations. So it's, I think it's just easier if I show you, um, it's gonna look like this. Uh, this is saying generation one, generation two, et cetera. This is saying um, basically trial one, version one, trial one, and then the number of uh, uh, cells at that point. So in generation four, trial one had one cell. And then all the way down here in generation 30, trial 1000 was extinct. It had, it had zero cells. Um, and, you know, a lot of rows, but this is what's nice about ggplot is it really likes these kind of long um, data objects and we can run our ggplot here. Again, we have a separate video on ggplot if you want to learn more, but X is going to be our generation. We're going to color by the variable, uh, which is the trial. And then we, we want to have the value, which is the number of offspring. Um, make sure to put your legend <laughs> and tab no legend uh, and your chart, other legend position equals none. Otherwise, you're going to get some, you know, a, a very ugly, uh, a huge legend because there's a thousand different trials. So we run this um, and look at that. Very cool. Our, a nice branching processes chart. And this is very intuitive. Each different colored line is a different trial. And you can see there's a ton of trials over here. A bunch kind of hit zero, but a bunch, you know, escape and, and get all the way up to, um, you know, go, grow all the way up. Um, there are some still around here that, you know, maybe it's unclear if they're going to go up or go to zero, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're still alive. And, and obviously kind of once you pass these thresholds, these populations just sort of explode upwards, which is, which is really cool. Um, so that's a cool visualization. Um, but, you know, let's check to see if like our hypothetical results um, work. We've shown, and I'll link the, the book below, but we've shown that um, in the like nth generation, the uh, average, uh, in the end generation, the average generation size is just the mean of the offspring distribution to the power of n. What do I mean by that? This is asking, I'm, I'm going to say, what's the mean of, this is technically the ninth generation because our first row is like our zero generation. So by the ninth generation, we're saying on average, we have five cells. Okay. And we want to make sure that that actually matches we take the mean of the offspring generation, which is just p times offspring to the power of nine, um, and we're going to get close to that. It's you know it's going to be a little bit different because of the simulation, but but that's that's good. And this again is another really nice heuristic. If the mean of the offspring generation was less than one, you know raising it to a power would bring it closer and closer to zero. So in the long run, you're going to you know you're going to go to zero. But here the mean is greater than one, so there's a possibility that it kind of it kind of explodes. And now what's interesting is we can look at these uh, like extinction probabilities. So I can say, okay, because we have, um, let's look at uh, data path again, one, five, one, 10, because oh, that's not what I want. I don't want a semicolon. Um, because we have like these actual paths, these actual trials, we can look at and say, okay, if the first cell has one child or two children or three children, what's the probability that that you know, eventually goes extinct. Um, because we have our data, which kind of we had from before, which says like the trial, if it went extinct or not, how many generations it ran, um, or you, what generation it went to went extinct, and then the, the size at the nth generation. Um, so we can use that, we can look at like these extinction values, um, you know, which we have here. And again, these should be um, about, uh, you know, it's going to go extinct about 75% of the time. Um, we want to look at the mean of these when data path two. So this is saying like the first, the fir after the first uh, offspring or the first cell reproduces, you know, what's the extinction probability if the first cell has zero children? Of course, it's going to be, it should be one. This is a good check to make sure. And yeah, it is. If the first cell has zero children, you know, that it's going to go, that population is going to go extinct probability one. What about if the first cell has one child? Well, then it's going to go extinct with, you know, probability 70%. And this, you know, theoretically, this should be the same as um, the overall mean of extinction because we're kind of just starting from scratch. We're starting with one cell. These numbers will be a little bit different because of simulation, but, you know, that, that's kind of the idea. What about if you have, uh, what about if the, you're in the second generation, you have two, uh, either, like the first cell has two children, you'd expect a little bit lower probability of going extinct. And indeed, 
now you're closer to a 50 50 shot of of making it if the first cell has two children if the first cell has three children you're you know the the population will probably survive it's only 45 percent of extinction and if the first cell has four children the population has this, almost a 60 percent chance of, of surviving um we saw a case earlier i think where um where was it data path eight um so in the eighth trial we saw by the fifth gener or the fourth generation we had 12 um uh so let's see what's the probability of uh extinction in the fifth or fourth generation let's say you have 12 cells um and in this case you know maybe we don't have let's see i mean let's see how many we have first of all let's uh let's let's see how many of these data points we have some of that we only have six data points we only have six trials where it hit 12 cells already by by you know the fifth generation, so take this with a grain of salt. But in those cases, every single one of the of the processes, um, you know, it didn't go extinct, exploded. So again, you'd want to run more simulations to get like this sample size to be bigger. But I think that's a pretty good a pretty good indicator of survival. We can even check like you know fourth generation six uh, six cells, and uh, there are twenty one of those cases, and uh, six. And you know you have a pretty good you have like an eighty five percent chance of survival, a forty percent chance of extinction, um, in those cases. And finally, we can check like uh, we can look at uh, data, which max n. Uh, oh, you know what? Sorry, I didn't I didn't save I didn't save n, so that won't work. Let's look at data path uh, thirty max. So there's one. Uh, in fact, it's, it's, it's right here. Um, trial 937, 938, 939. Let's look at that data path. Sorry, I'm just kind of going off the cuff here. But um, this trial was the most prodigious. It got all the way up to 3,800 um, cells by generation 30. And you can see it, is, it started off pretty strong, you know, reproduced right away to three, and then more than double to seven, then 10, then 14, 19. This is pretty big jump from 19 to 31, another big jump from 31 to 50, um, and kind of just it exploded from there. I'm looking for any other big jumps. This is kind of a big jump, 1100 to 1500. So, you know, started off strong and just sort of exploded from there. And this was, this was the biggest, uh, um, this was the biggest uh, branching process. Whereas in reverse, there are plenty of branching processes that just died out right away. So again, uh, kind of a cool way actual paths of these simulations um you know feel free to mess around with the code but i think it's useful to sort of understand the background and get some cool charts out of it charts out of it so uh we'll see you next time